on national character. It took hundreds of thousands of years of evolution and mutation for man to escape the animal condition. To return man to the animal condition, not a single mutation is needed. All it takes is a whack on the head. The matter is even simpler when it comes to our civilization, for it leaves no traces in the genes. Perfectly civilized English schoolchildren, abandoned by fate on a desert island, easily turn into savages. Children separated from their parents by a barrier of hate, and from all past traditions by propaganda easily become Maoist Red Guards, SS soldiers, or the likes of Pavlik Morozov. Lord of the Flies lies dormant in every one of us, biding its time. You think you are better, Mr. Professor? Scratch yourself, and under the Harvard varnish, you will be sure to find your very own Russian. Is it not striking that in the 20th century, after Camus and Ionesco, Brecht and Bulgakov, Orwell and Zamyatin, we still believe lullabies and fairy tales about good and bad nations? Vladimir Bukowski responding to Richard Pipes in his book USSR From Utopia to Disaster, Robert Lafont, Paris, 1990. Human nature is exactly the same in the West as it is in the East. Vladimir Bukowski speaking in Padua, Italy on March the 22nd, 1999. We are all somewhat in the same family, if only by the similarity of our destinies, of our characters. Independent of our nationality and our age, we are all born in Budapest, went to school in Prague, reached adulthood in the Soviet concentration camps, and maturity in the Gdansk shipyards. Our experience is uninterrupted and the process in which we participate is irreversible. Vladimir Bukowski in a letter to Polish solidarity leader Zbigniew Bujak in Andrzej Zakharov and Peace, Continent Verlag, GmbH, 1985. Because we have approximately 100 different nationalities in our country, most of them subjugated and captured by force, the development of national feelings and movements for national independence is very strong now. I am speaking about the Baltic states, the Ukraine, Central Asia, and the Caucasus. These areas are particularly troubled with national problems. I am speaking about minorities like the Crimean Tatars, who were deported from their homeland to Central Asia, or the Volga Germans, who were expelled from their own territory and scattered. These people are, of course, a potential threat for the regime. Vladimir Bukowski speaking at the American Enterprise Institute, June 12, 1979. Well, each of us knows perfectly in the depths of his soul that communism is, above all, a self-occupation and cannot exist without our complicity, even if it is only a formal complicity. In this regard, the Russians are neither better nor worse than the others. We were just the first to be struck, and I think the first to receive the hardest blow of which few people at the time could predict the consequences. Our fathers did not yet have under their eyes the examples of Kalima and Cambodia. It took dozens of years of terror, tens of millions of individuals swallowed up by the Gulag before we, their children, understood that great crimes begin with little compromises. Now that I have lived in various countries in the free world, I have noticed that there is no lack of fuzzy thinkers there, that there are louses everywhere, and that every man has in himself a slave part and a master part, more slave than master generally. Vladimir Bukowski in a letter to Polish solidarity leader Zbigniew Bujak in Andrzej Sakharov and Peace, Continent Verlag, GmbH, 1985.